we're going to be looking at every single active female WWE superstar on the roster today and ranking their chances of becoming a future world champion. Unlike the men, the women's world titles do tend to change hands a bit more frequently. However, even now in the women's division, we're starting to have these semi-historic long reigns. We have Rhea Ripley, who is pretty much all but guaranteed to break the one-year mark, and then we also have Io Sky that's quietly on her seventh month. So even for the women, it's becoming harder to become a world champion with this new trend of longer reigns. But the question still remains whether these long historic reigns are just a fad of the moment today, or if this is just the new norm for the rest of time. As always, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, ring the bell for notifications. If you're a wrestling fan, I know you're going to fall in love with this YouTube channel because we upload daily wrestling content. Also, I already made this exact same video for the men that I uploaded yesterday, so make sure you go check that out as well. Before we get started, I think it would be appropriate to go through the different tier rankings that I have here. The lowest tier is no chance in hell, and these are individuals that I truly believe have a 0% chance of ever becoming a future world champion. Then we have way down the line. These are individuals where if you look at them right now, it makes zero sense for them to become a world champion, but with enough passage of time and enough changes to their character and gimmicks, there's a possibility that they could become a world champion in the future. The third tier up is I wouldn't even be mad. These are individuals that if they were to win a world championship, it would be incredibly shocking and surprising. However, we wouldn't be that upset about it. The second highest tier is, yeah, that makes sense. These are individuals where if somebody from the future were to come back and tell you that that person ended up winning a world championship, you wouldn't necessarily be surprised. You would just say, yeah, I think there's enough evidence to back that up. It makes sense. And the highest tier is bet the house. These are people that I am just a thousand percent sure are eventually going to win a world championship. All right, now let's jump into it. Alba Fire is a great worker. However, right now she suffers from the stigma that she is a tag team specialist. So until that changes, and enough time passes where she can become a credible single star, I don't see it happening, but I don't think that the chances are zero, so I'm gonna say way down the line. Alexa Bliss is still young. She's still in her early 30s and already has the resume of a WWE Hall of Famer. Once she comes back from her maternity leave, I'm confident that she's gonna be immediately inserted right back into the main event scene, and with enough time passing by, I'm confident that you gotta bet the house. She's going to win another world title. It would be irresponsible of me to not have Oscar in the bet your house category when she's already won a world title this year alone and she's consistently in the main event scene just right now as of the making of this video she's just a member of a larger group in damage control but inevitably she's going to go back off on her own and she's going to be a contender time and time and time again it would be dumb of me to not say bet the house unless bfab changes to something that isn't a manager which right now the wwe hasn't given us any indication that that's ever going to change because she went from being one manager to being another manager. So I don't think that's ever going to change, which is a shame because BFAB can actually go in the ring. So I'm sadly going to have to say no chance in hell. Bailey is for sure winning a world title. In fact, I think she's going to be winning a world title at this year's WrestleMania. And even if for some weird ungodly reason, they don't put the title on Bailey at WrestleMania, she's still going to win another one. This is, a, well, this is one of the four horsewomen. It'd be dumb for me to not to say bet the house. Same thing with Becky Lynch. I don't think I need to make a serious argument here. This is a legend already in her own right. A legend that's still in her prime. She is going to win more world titles. And I say tight tolls in plural because she will win a handful more a thousand percent you got to put her in the bet the house category when all is said and done it's very possible that bianca belair may go down as the single greatest female wwe superstar in terms of accolades to ever grace a wwe ring she is at the top of the mountain really the only person that's in conversation with her in terms of how uh, i guess consistently at the top she is is charlotte so to be in company with somebody like charlotte says a lot some like Bianca Belair is going to win double digit world titles in the WWE she still has so many more to win bet the house oh man I like Candice LeRae but unless something changes in terms of how she's booked because really right now she's just a glorified jobber she's a tag team specialist and the other thing that's kind of working against her is that she is about to reach 40 years old so there isn't a heck of a lot of time left for us to be able to change the narrative of Candice LeRae however you know she was a top contender in NXT under Triple H 
maybe there is a possibility that something could change. So I'm going to say way down the line because I know how good Candice LeRae can actually be as a singles competitor. We've seen it in NXT. We've yet to see it on the main roster. So I know there's not a heck of a whole lot of time left, but I'm going to say down the line. I do have a hard time seeing a world where Carmella wins another championship, but also at the same time, if she were to win a championship, this is somebody that's always in the good books with WWE. This is somebody that's won a world championship before and was a really good semi-dominant heel champion when she was a champion so i'd say yeah okay it makes sense to me charlotte is going to break her dad's record she still has so many years left of work in the wwe and she is still at the very top of the mountain she is going to win another handful of titles and she's going to win titles that you don't want her to win and people are going to say that she's overbooked and she's overpushed and that could be a debate for a different time for another video but right now i'm going to tell you right now it would be colossally stupid for you to not bet the house on charlotte i I am very bullish on Chelsea Green. If you were to put her in a lower category, I may not necessarily even try to argue with you, but I see somebody that has a unique skill set that not a lot of other women or men in the WWE have, which is to play this type of snively, evil, weaselly character. I've seen men be able to pull it off, but I haven't seen too many women do it as good as Chelsea Green. And because she has that differentiator to be able to stand out from the pack i think that there is a lot of value in her being a world champion so this is gonna be like my 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 big wild guess i'm gonna say bet the house on chelsea green dakota kai almost almost made it to the bet the house category she is a fantastic worker she when she gets the opportunity she is great on the microphone i think that we're going to be seeing a lot more of dakota kai as the storyline with bailey and damage control starts to unfold even more especially if we get her as a ruthless heel i think the only thing that's preventing her from being in the bet the house category is the fact that she's never won the top title in the main roster and she can be a little bit injury prone so i'm gonna say it makes sense because the talent is there but i I cannot give her bet the house. Electra Lopez is just so new to the main roster that we don't really know what her role is going to be. Right now, she is a manager, but I can't lump her in the same category as somebody like BFAB because BFAB now has years of evidence to show that that seems to be all that the WWE is going to have her doing. It's very possible that couple of months from now Electra Lopez is an in-ring competitor because again we don't have the full slate of years worth of evidence to say nah she's just going to be a manager for the rest of her career so because of that I'm not going to put her in the no chance in hell I'm going to put her in the way down the line things need to change a lot needs to change it's very possible very likely even that she never does win a world title but it, I can't say zero percent right now Indy Hartwell you need to hear me out okay because right now if we look at Indy Hartwell as she is right now in the WWE the way she's being booked I don't think that she has a chance to ever become a world champion however she is under the tutelage of a great veteran in the name of Candice LeRae and on top of that she's only 27 years old she already showed that she can be a world championship caliber wrestler down in NXT so she has a lot of years left is learning under a great performer and Candice LeRae has already been proven to have to be a Triple H slash Shawn Michaels favorite in terms of booking, I'm gonna put her a bit higher than maybe some of you. I'm gonna put her in the make sense category because of all of the positives that she has going. However, it's kind of like a combination of it makes sense, but also way down the line because a lot of things do need to change and improve for Indy Hartwell to get to that world championship caliber. But again, she's young and she has the chops. The talent is right there. Isla Dawn, kind of the same situation as Alba Fire. She just has that stigma right now that she's a tag team specialist. A lot of things need to change. We need to put this down the line. She needs to not be a tag team specialist. She needs to go off on her own and demonstrate that she is capable of being a singles world champion. Right now, we don't have the evidence that she can do that. So we're gonna have to put that in way down the line. I think the WWE has already demonstrated that they are super bullish on Ivy Nile. She got championship opportunities within her first like three weeks on the main roster. She has a unique look of being a muscular muscle hamster. So she brings that unique 
aspect to women's wrestling as well. And I think that she's still got a lot of mileage left in the world of the WWE with how they're already booking her and treating her this earlier on in the main roster run of her career. I'm going to say bet the house. I think this championship reign that EO Sky is currently on is just the tip of the iceberg. I think that she's going to win plenty more handfuls of WWE championships on the main roster. I think we got to bet the house on EO. Jade Cargill, come on. You know, I don't need to really debate this one here. This is a for sure bet the house. The way that WWE has been talking about her booking her she is going to be a multi-time world champion in fact i wouldn't be surprised if she's a world champion within her first year in the wwe you gotta bet the house on jade Kyrie sane even though she's a tag team specialist right now in the wwe doesn't quite have the exact same stigma as some of the other tag team specialists because we have seen her be a top women's champion in nxt as well as new japan pro wrestling so WWE Brass knows that she can roll in the ring and she can carry a division if they let her. So it's one of those situations where the dichotomy of, of her current role in the WWE does need to change. But if they do decide to change that, if she does become a world champion, I'm going to say it makes sense. This is where the real stigma of just being a tag team specialist comes in. We have Katana Chance uh, way down the line, as well as Caden Carter. I'm going to say way down the line because they... They just, just aren't going to win world titles if they're just entrenched in the tag team division. Enough time needs to pass where they need to go off on their own, create their own identities for us to consider them as a future world champion contender. Liv Morgan is a thousand percent going to win another world title. She's still young, has plenty of mileage left, and she's ridiculously popular. And in my opinion, she gets better every year as an in-ring worker and as a character worker. So to me, she's only going to continue to get better, which means she's going to get even more championship opportunities and continue to fill that trophy case. So bet the house on Liv Morgan. Oh, Maxine Dupree. Here's the thing. One thing needs to change and it needs to change desperately, but luckily she's young and still has lots of years to be able to fix this. She just needs to be a better wrestler. Look, I think she actually has a very good on-screen aura and persona, personality. She connects with the audience, but my goodness, it is sometimes rough seeing her in the ring. So way down the line, once the in-ring works get, gets better, I'll feel a little bit more confident moving her up this ranking. Mia Yim, hear me out. Mia Yim has been a treat. She has been a gem with her in-ring work. Anytime you put Mia Yim out there, she ends up putting on one of the better women's matches of the night. So I really like the work that she's doing. I think that she is one of those people that maybe with enough matches under her belt with enough years of continuously impressing fans it could happen and if it does i wouldn't even be mad naomi is a proven commodity in the wwe and outside of the wwe where she won smackdown women's titles here in the wwe and she went over to tna and ran the women's division there so she is a proven top of the mountain competitor it would be ridiculous that if for the rest of her career she doesn't win another world title she's going to bet the house on naomi if Natalia were to win another world title, I would personally be a little bit surprised, but not enough where I wouldn't be able to make sense of it because this is a legend and she is a veteran of the business. I would say it would make sense. Again, it's not necessarily the right of the, the route that I would go, but I couldn't argue the logic. Nia Jax has been an absolute renaissance since she's come back to the WWE. She has been fantastic. The only thing really that needs to improve is her promo work. It's a little bit shoddy and sometimes a little bit cringeworthy, but she is so much better in the ring. And I've mentioned this before with certain women that have the this unique aspect about them. She has that unique aspect of being the monster of the women's division. Bet the house, she's gonna win more world titles. Look, I know Nikki Cross is a former world champion, but I can't put her in the same category as somebody like Carmella. I take Carmella far more seriously as a potential threat to win a world championship again in the future. Right now, like, she is literally just a background prop in WWE television. I don't see her ever being rebuilt to the point where she can win a world championship. Frankly, I was pretty bewildered when they made her a world champion in the first place when she was the superhero Nikki A.S.H. 
still. So I do take that into consideration that this is a former women's world champion. But look, everything that I've seen over the last two years, I just don't see it ever being in the cards ever again. No chance in hell. Piper Nevin would be an interesting choice. I think that they would need to be a little bit more serious in terms of actually booking her like a monster like they have with Nia Jax because they are kind of start stop with it. Sometimes she's this unstoppable beast and then sometimes uh, she'll take the pin against like a Caden Carter or Katana Chance. So we need to maybe change those optics about her and actually make her this monster. But she is very believable. She's a great worker. I wouldn't even be mad if they pulled this off. It's actually kind of insane to think about the fact that Raquel Rodriguez isn't already a world champion in the WWE. I really thought with the entire package that she provides, the fact that she was a former women's champion down in NXT, that they would have already put a strap on her. However, she was a victim of one of these historic reigns in Rhea Ripley. However, if we decide to go back to the world of shorter title reigns, I wouldn't be surprised if Raquel Rodriguez ends up holding a handful of of world titles i think you gotta bet the house rhea ripley i mean i mean she probably just might never lose this championship with how dominant she is and if she does lose this championship wouldn't be surprised if she wins it right back at the very next ple that's just how powerful she is and on top of just being a physical presence she has also figured out how to be a presence in terms of an aura and in terms of personality like she really does dominate the room whenever she enters it really is mommy is always on top whether it's physically emotionally or psychologically and to me that entire package just speaks volumes to what she's going to be able to accomplish as a heel or babyface in the wwe bet the house scarlet is actually a really good in-ring performer however the wwe doesn't seem to be interested in any way, shape, or form in using her as such. So similar to BFAB, even though I know BFAB and Scarlet can actually go in the ring, the WWE has given me enough evidence to at the very least make an educated assumption that she's never gonna actually be a full-time in-ring performer. Because of that, I'm gonna go no chance in hell. Shayna Baszler, look, I, at this point, I can't even put her in the it makes sense because I would actually be shocked if the WWE decided to pull the trigger on Shayna Baszler considering they didn't when it actually made sense to pull the trigger on Shayna Baszler when she was over as hell and she was incredibly dominant. Now all of that allure from back in 2020, 2019 isn't there anymore and the WWE has really struggled to rebuild that image of this unstoppable badass that she had all of those years ago. So sadly, she is in the I wouldn't be mad category because it'd be awesome if they did it, but I see no evidence to tell me that it makes any sense right now. Shotzi still has plenty of life left in the WWE. Uh, she has already been a quasi main event or kind of jumping from the mid card to the main event scene whenever it is that she's needed. Uh, so I do see a world where maybe down the line, as some of the older women start to retire, maybe Shotzi steps up. There's a possibility. I don't think the odds are zero, but I don't think they're necessarily amazing at the very least with the evidence that we have. Sonya Deville would actually be a very fascinating, interesting choice as a champion. She has demonstrated that she is a great in-ring worker, and she has also demonstrated, especially in the last two years, that she is a great character worker as well. I don't see enough evidence for it to make sense yet, However, if they were to get wild with it and give a championship to Sonya Deville, I don't think I'd be mad. Tamina, apparently, look, she's on the WWE.com site, apparently still employed with the WWE. No chance in hell. Tiffany Stratton is like the brawn breaker of the women's division in terms of like what I see for her as a future and as an NXT call-up. She is going to have a phenomenal career. She's only 24 years old and I can see her holding a world championship before she even turns 25. Bet the house valhalla unlike scarlet and bfab has been an in-ring performer in the wwe before so this stigma of her just being a manager doesn't fully sway my decision to put her in the no chance in hell on top of that she's only 30 years old she still has a lot of time left in her career we'll just have to see if the wwe is willing to shift her back to being a full-time actual in-ring performer having matches being in the women's division as opposed to just being more or less a valet for the viking raiders so i'm gonna say way down the line and 
probably have to lose the Viking gimmick too. Tegan Knox's only enemy to becoming a future world champion down the line is herself with all of her injuries, but she's young and she's a great performer. We'll just have to see if the WWE can build her to be a credible contender because right now they haven't really done the job to be able to do that. However, because of how much time she actually has left in her career, I'm going to say way down the line, but a lot of things need to change in terms of how she's booked for us to even consider it as a possibility. Zia Lee, look, I don't know where she's gone, but she went through this like five month run that was a tremendous amount of fun and made me realize how good she actually can be. I think as a heel, she's the package. I think she can be a great addition to the women's division if they actually utilize her on an extended run as opposed to just this like start stop booking. So I wouldn't be mad if the WWE actually used her on a proper full-time basis. It was there every week, didn't disappear after a four-week appearance. I wouldn't be mad if they pulled the trigger on Xia Li. Zelina Vega is a workhorse that is loved by just about everyone in the WWE. Similar to Sarah Logan slash Valhalla, she also has proof and evidence that she isn't just a manager as she's been more of an in-ring performer than manager because of all the work that she's done how good she is and how beloved she is honestly i wouldn't be mad i would love zelina vega to get an opportunity although as of the making of this video zoe stark's stock is very low i have to consider a couple things one she's very young she's still only in her first 12 months of her main roster call-up and in those 12 months, she was already in a main event caliber feud with the likes of Trish Stratus and Becky Lynch. And she has already been given two championship opportunities, one in the Fatal Five Way at Crown Jewel and one against Rhea Ripley in a one-on-one -on -one match. So clearly the WWE trusts her in this atmosphere within her first 10 months of being a main roster wrestler. She has a lot of time left in her career and she she's already being treated the way that she is even though right now as of the making of this video she's kind of treading water i'm gonna say you gotta bet the house on zoe stark i think it would be with, with the evidence that we have i think it would be just a bad choice to put her anywhere else all right folks that's the video let me know what you think i got wrong you guys were quite voiceful in the last video but again this is a nice mature comment section so debate amongst yourselves let me know that's it I'm done. Get out of here.